I've had it with being with an ugly old wife. I have a cute girlfriend now. I'm going to live with her, so divorce me right now. My husband, Kevin, who made me quit my job and burdened me with the care of my bedridden father in law without any support, demanded a divorce. Hearing this made me feel like I have been punched in the head. You've been cheating on me? And you're serious about divorcing me? For her? Yeah, that's right. I've been thinking about when to dump you anyway. Sign the divorce papers. I'm leaving this place today. He then flaunted a large suitcase. What? You're leaving? What about your father? Like I can stand taking care of that bitch-ridden old man. You take care of him. It's your responsibility. But you're his son. You're abandoning your own father? Say whatever you want. Oh, and I'll be taking Dad's inheritance. Just so you know. Shocked, I couldn't even open my mouth or stand up. Without listening to any plea, he left. Clenching my fists, I trembled alone. He forced the care of his father on me, cheated on me during that time, and now he's declaring a divorce. To keep mocking his father and throw the care onto me is something I could never forgive. Then, right after that, my usually silent father in law suddenly burst out laughing and said, I'll show that worthless son a real hell. My name is Clarissa, and I'm a 40 year old part time housewife. I met my husband Kevin 16 years ago through a mutual friend. I was a school teacher, and Kevin worked for a small to mid sized company. He was easygoing. Or positively speaking, he had a cheerful personality. He was the opposite of me, who was often described as too serious, but perhaps I was attracted to the qualities I lacked. Our relationship progressed smoothly, and on our second anniversary, he proposed to me. I happily accepted, and we got engaged. My parents approved of the marriage, and next, We went to greet his family. His mother had passed away when he was in high school, and his father, Connor, a senior executive at a large corporation, lived alone. His family home was quite a mansion, which made me nervous. Ah,、oh, glad you could come. I'm genuinely happy to meet you. He looked stern and serious. Because of his high social status, but he had a warm smile. He was consistently kind to me, and, of course, approved of our marriage. Clarissa, are you sure about marrying this foolish son of mine? I care deeply for Kevin. I see. Kevin, make sure you take good care of Clarissa. I will, Dad. With that, meeting his family, Went smoothly. On the way back, Kevin, scratching his head, said, Dad's pretty strict with me. I can't really stand up to him. But he's sweet on you, Clarissa. Oh? Looks like you've won him over. Make sure to keep on good terms with him. Of course, I will. Afterwards, we had a small wedding ceremony. And at that time, my father in law gave us a wedding gift of $6,700. And so began the life of Kevin and me. We started living in a rental apartment, about a 30 minute drive from his family home. However, we soon ran into a problem. Frankly, Kevin's salary alone was not reassuring. I liked my job as a teacher, so we both worked, but he was surprisingly bad at doing household chores. All the housework was left to me. Even if I asked, he wouldn't even vacuum. We're married now, and housework is the wife's job. I'm the husband. I work and come home tired. 
This was his argument, but I was just as tired from working. Even when I expressed this, his attitude didn't change. Gradually, I got used to him not doing any housework, and I ended up taking care of everything myself. Time flew by, and it had been five years since we got married. When I turned 30, a new problem came to light. We hadn't been able to have children. I love kids, which makes sense since I'm a teacher. Kevin wanted kids too, but there was no sign of pregnancy. We both got checked out at a fertility clinic, but neither of us had any issues. We didn't understand why we couldn't conceive, though they say these things happen sometimes. After getting the results, I said to Kevin, Hey, should we consider trying advanced fertility treatments? They're expensive, but... What? He frowned all of a sudden. It's a waste of money to spend on stuff like that. Besides, it's your fault we can't have kids in the first place. But the test said there was nothing wrong. No, they're wrong. If there's nothing wrong with me, it has to be you. We can't have kids because of you. Aren't you sorry for that? He kept blaming me for our inability to conceive. He continued to say things like, Apologize to me for not being able to have kids. And I felt increasingly cornered mentally. Eventually, I began to believe that it was indeed my fault. He blamed me, and I also blamed myself. So I started losing a lot of weight. One day, I went to my in-law's house, alone, on an errand, and my father-in-law, Connor, was shocked and spoke to me. Clarissa, you look pale. And you seem to have lost weight. Is something wrong? I'm sorry, Connor. I may not be able to give you a grandchild because of me. He supported me as I broke down, crying. As I tearfully explained the situation, he said to me, There's no blaming anyone for this. It's just something that can't be helped. Clarissa, you shouldn't blame yourself. Oh, Connor. There are plenty of happy couples without children. That's all you need to aspire to. Don't worry about giving me a grandchild or anything like that. Thank you, Connor. After that, he called Kevin and scolded him quite severely for how he had treated me. When we came back home, he was fuming. My dad yelled at me because you ratted me out. How could you do this to me? I just... It's your fault we can't have kids. So why do I have to get yelled at? This makes no sense. Even after being scolded by his father, Kevin didn't change his stance that it was my fault we were infertile. From then on, as if to show his anger towards me, he wouldn't lay a finger on me. Ten years passed, and I turned 40. Since there was no intimacy, having children was out of the question, and I had long given up on pregnancy. Still, we functioned as a married couple. Though our relationship was cold, we did talk. I continued to handle all the housework and the more bothersome tasks. Over these ten years, Connor was always considerate and kind to me. When I cooked too much for dinner, I would take it to his place to check on him. He would give me delicious sweets or gifts to take home with me. That's how I've been living. When he retired from his job three years ago, we even celebrated his retirement. But then, tragedy struck. As usual, I texted him saying I was on my way over, but there was no reply. 
A bad feeling washed over me, so I rushed to his place and entered the house with my spare key, only to find him collapsed in the hallway. Connor, Connor, please hang in there. I called an ambulance right away, went to the hospital, and I've also contacted Kevin. They say he had a stroke. He's had surgery, but they're saying a full recovery is unlikely. They're saying there's a high chance he'll be bedridden. Dad had a stroke, and he's going to be bedridden. It seems he was shocked too, because he left the hospital room. After that, Kevin and I decided to discuss what to do next at home. Then nonchalantly, he dropped this on me. We're going to live at my parents' place from now on, and you're going to take care of Dad. What? But I have a job. Quit it then. Is your job more important than my dad? He snapped at me, seemingly outraged. Connor has been my lifesaver, but my job is just as important to me. I suggested relying on caregiver services, but he refused, saying it would be a waste of money. And so, with a heavy heart, I quit my job and dedicated myself to taking care of my father-in-law at my husband's family home. He's now suffering from hemiplegia and aphasia. He can hardly speak or move, so he's bedridden. Old man, being like this, is pretty miserable. Well, I'm counting on you for the rest, Clarissa. As soon as Kevin got home, he just set this in front of his father and went off to another room. While I was fuming, Connor told me something astonishing. After that. Kevin just dumped all the care for his father on me and didn't even try to help. Not only that, but he began coming home later and later and was hardly ever home. I struggled with the unfamiliar task of caring for him for several months. It was about eight months after Connor had the stroke. Kevin came home late again that day. Ah, you're home, Kevin, possibly drunk. Walked into his father's room and started saying this to me. Your plain face is quite a sight. Not even wearing a bit of makeup again today. You're failing as a woman. The reason I don't wear makeup is because I sweat from caregiving and also to keep it off Connor. And yet he has the nerve to say that. As I was about to retort, he continued. But I won't have to see this plain face after today. Here, sign this. He unexpectedly shoved divorce papers in my face. As I stood there shocked, he went on. I'm sick of being with a plain, barren wife who can't even put on makeup. I've got a cute girlfriend now. I'm going to live with her. So hurry up and sign. Hearing this felt like a blow to the head. You've been cheating on me, and you're serious about divorcing me for her? Yeah, that's right. I've been thinking about when to dump you anyway. Sign the divorce papers. I'm leaving this place today. He then flaunted a large suitcase. What? You're leaving? What about your father? Like I can stand taking care of that bedridden old man. You take care of him. It's your responsibility. But you're his son. You're abandoning your own father. Say whatever you want. Oh, but I'll be taking Dad's inheritance, just so you know. As I stood there, speechless and unable to stand, he added, as if he remembered something. Oh, I'll be taking this too. It's no use to a bedridden man, right? Before I knew it. He had Connor's credit card in his hand. He left without listening to me as I tried to stop him. I stood there alone, shaking with clenched fists. I couldn't forgive him for pushing the caregiving onto me, cheating, and then asking for a divorce out of the blue. He kept mocking Connor, dumped the care on me, and just expected me to handle it. I couldn't let this slide. He needed to be punished for this. Yet I had already quit my job, 
and I wasn't financially equipped. Even though I was desperate, I couldn't leave my kind father-in-law. While I felt hopeless, Connor, who had been silent until now, suddenly burst into laughter. I'm going to show that worthless son of mine what hell is. He sat up abruptly and perched on the bed. Actually, he had been making progress in his rehab, and his aphasia and physical condition had improved to the point where he could get up on his own. One day, he shared something shocking with me. Even if I continue rehab and get better, I want you to let Kevin think I'm still bedridden. Could he have anticipated the situation? As I stood there, astonished, he continued. Just as I thought, that guy turned out to be a real piece of work. Thank you for putting up with everything until now, Clarissa. Connor. Let me handle things from here on out, okay? First off. The next day, when I went to ask about Kevin at his company, they simply said he had quit. I tried reaching out to places he might go and to our friends and acquaintances, but he was nowhere to be found. He had completely vanished. However, Connor just smirked and said, Just watch. A month later, as Connor and I were at home, someone began pounding on the front door. When I peered through the peephole, there was Kevin, his face beat red. I looked at my nodding father-in-law and let him in. Hey. Dad's credit card has been declined. Did you cancel it? As he started yelling in the entryway, I silently headed toward the living room. Wait, what do you think you're... What the... Kevin, who had followed me, was stunned to see his father sitting on the sofa. D dad Why? Weren't you supposed to be bedridden? It's been a while, Kevin. Take a seat over there. As Connor spoke calmly, Kevin sat down on the sofa, trembling. I stood next to Connor with a stern expression. I was the one who cancelled the credit card. Why should I let you use my money? D dad um, it's not like that. Connor ignored him and looked at me. I spoke in a quiet voice. I'm going to go after you for infidelity. I want alimony. What? Alimony? What are you talking about? Remember? You confessed to cheating before, right? It's only fair to ask for alimony. Um. He stammered, but he eventually blurted out. I, I never cheated. There's no proof. I silently slammed several photos onto the table. They showed him entering a hotel with a young woman and kissing her. What the hell is this? Your father had a detective investigate. A detective? You shouldn't have been able to find me. I was in the next state. Then Connor said with a look of disbelief. If you look at the credit card statements, it's easy to figure out where you are. You always use the same hotels. You're truly a fool. Oh. His face went pale, but he quickly tried to regain his composure. This happened after we got divorced. It doesn't prove I cheated during our marriage. Excuse me? We're not divorced yet. When I showed him the divorce papers that hadn't changed since that day, Kevin grew even paler. You... you haven't filed them yet? Of course not. You think you can just disappear without discussing money and leave everything to me? But... but... As he hung his head, Connor spoke in a stern voice. It looks like you've racked up some debt, haven't you? You were probably counting on my estate to bail you out. What? How did you even... But Dad, I'm the only one who can inherit your estate, so what's the big deal? Watching him, my father-in-law just scoffed. I've decided to give my estate to Clarissa while I'm still alive. You will be excluded from the inheritance. You won't get a thing. It seems you are banking on me dying soon, but you miscalculated. What? I'm being excluded from the inheritance? Despite Kevin's pleas to reconsider, Connor was serious. Realizing this, Kevin turned to me, begging. Clarissa, 
I messed up big time. I'll break it off with the other woman. Let's start over. And you haven't filed the divorce papers yet, right? This will work perfectly. In response to his desperate plea, I raised my voice and told him straight. As if I'd ever start over with you. We're getting a divorce. I'm going to demand my share of the property, so pay up and get lost. No. I threw him out of the house as he hung his head low. Later on, my divorce from Kevin was finalized. I managed to receive half of our joint savings without a hitch. With no inheritance from his father, Kevin was quickly dumped by his mistress. Now estranged from Connor as well, he's apparently rolling into a shabby apartment chased by debt collectors. Hearing about his misfortune, all I can think is, serves him right. As for me, after receiving the gift from my father-in-law, I was introduced to a tutoring school run by one of his acquaintances. I began working there as a teacher. As for Connor, he moved into a slightly smaller house, hired a caregiver, and is living a comfortable life. His health has greatly improved, and we sometimes have lunch together. I'm grateful to him and want to keep moving forward, lighting up my life with positivity.